Hi everyone, this is Megan Donnelly from Able Cine, and today we're going to talk about the exposure tools on the Zacuto Gradical Viewfinder. So one of the first things I wanted to show you how to do is how to calibrate the gradical. Because when you're on set, when you're outside, when you're inside, it can be really crucial that you're judging exposure based on your viewfinder. Of course, we also have exposure tools to do that as well, but if you're a DP looking at the viewfinder, you want to know, you know what you can trust in the image. So the first thing you can do is you go through the menu and you can pull up a color bars. So we'll go through color bars and we can choose either the Simpty chart or a Macbeth chart. So the reason that's helpful is then you can calibrate the viewfinder. So once we get out of there, we'll go through display calibration. And here we have quite a few tools to, you know, adjust the image on the viewfinder. So we have brightness, we have contrast, we have saturation, we have red, green, and blue. And then we also can change, you know, which gamma it's on. And then what's really helpful is you can also always restore the default. So if you go to a new job or you need to just reset it, you could always go to the, the default. So now let's take a closer look at the menu options for our exposure tools and the gradical. So you'll see here with the image, I have the scopes displayed at the bottom, and what I like is they don't overlay over the image. So as an operator, I can still frame appropriately. So let's go into our menu, and the fourth option we have is scopes. So here I can toggle the scopes on or off. So if I go off, I have the image to the full frame. However, what I like to do is I leave this on, and then later we can set a user button to do the toggling for us. The next thing we have here is to show you that the histogram is on the bottom left and then we have a waveform next to it on the right. So what you can do is have the histogram at all times and then have the waveform or the vector scope. So what I'll do is I'll set a user button to toggle between the waveform and the vector scope just in case on set I want to view the saturation and chrominance values that the vector scope can show me. So the histogram summarizes luminance values for the entire image and the relative quantities of each pixel with each value vertically, meaning I can see how much overexposure or underexposure or proper exposure I have in one image. The waveform monitor shows me all of the IRE concentrations for each vertical image segment, which gives me a little bit more detailed information, so I use the waveform constantly. So the next thing we can choose is where the scopes are. We can have them on the bottom or the top. But most importantly, what we can decide here is whether the scopes are reading the post-LUT image or the pre-LUT image. So what I mean by that is if we're recording log, which I am here with the FS7, I can decide do I want to view my scopes viewing the log image or the post-LUT image. So what I like to do on set is I view them post-LUT because I'm traditionally used to reading a waveform in a Rec. 709 viewing space. So I'm going to leave them here with post LUT and then we'll set up a user button to toggle between the LUT on and off and our scopes will change as well. Then you can see with the scopes what you're really getting in the log capture as well. So now, since I have that as F1, you'll see now my scopes reflect Rec. 709. When I go to F1 and it goes back to the log image, the scopes adjust to show me what I'm really getting and what that log exposure looks like. So this is helpful to compare. Am I really clipping or do I have it? So this shows me I've got it in log and if I toggle it'll show me what the waveform and the histogram look like in Rec. 709. If we go back to our function menu, the next thing I've set is F3 to be toggle, waveform, and vector scope. So what this does is it shows me the waveform and I can toggle to the vector scope if I want to see chrominance values and saturation. So now let's take a look at our overlay options. So if you go into menu, there's an option called overlay. And my first one is false color. So false color is really great because it can show me the ratio of exposure with the whole image. So if I want to make sure I'm getting enough contrast, enough separation from the foreground to the background, I really like false color because it shows me ratio more clearly than a lot of the other tools. Also with the gradical, on the bottom right you see the key, so it's really clear which color represents which IRE value. But what I like to do is I leave it off here and then I'll set a user button in a second so that we can toggle on and off. The next thing to show you are zebras. So again, with zebras, we can leave them off here and then toggle them on and off with a user. But what's really cool with the gradical is not only can you set two zebras, but you can set two different colors for those zebras. So unlike other cameras where it can be a little difficult to tell the difference between zebra one and zebra two, the gradical makes it really clear because you can set one to a color and one to a different color. But what I also want to mention is that the zebras here with the gradical represent 
the image that you're sending it. So in other words, it's always going to see log in this current configuration, whereas my scopes can show me log or the LUT. So make sure you keep that in mind because with the zebra showing you log, you might want your meter readings to be different. So let's go ahead and do that. So normally with 709, I would want my zebras to show me clipping at 100. Let's go ahead and take it to 80, since that's going to be showing me log and I need to know sooner. So the same representation, I could take what's normally Caucasian skin, take it to 50. And now I can set a user button to those two functions. So we'll go back to our function buttons. And as you can see, I've set false color to be up and exposure sys to be down. So if I get out of this menu, I go up, I can see false color to show my ratio of exposure. Take that off for a second. And if I go down, I can see my zebras. So on my next video, we'll talk about all the different LUT functions of the graticle. And that's where you can really see when the scopes come into play about which you're viewing, either LUT or linear mode. Um, but that's it for now. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I'm Megan Donnelly from Able Cine, and we'll see you next time.